Times are uncertain, but your job doesn't have to be. Fidelity Investments is hiring for tech roles in Ireland. Apply now at fidelityinvestments.ie. Hello and you're welcome to The Big Tech Show uh, from Dublin 9 here. My hair is getting a bit longer. Uh, we're about six weeks into the lockdown. But I'm delighted to say that we're joined today by Mike Fierick, the founder and chief executive of Allison.com, one of Europe's biggest online learning platforms and a sizable player in many global markets. Uh, Mike, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Adrian. Good to be we have to call it. We have to call it a vlog cast these days. That's fine. Um, I saw a picture of MTV DJ Kurt Loder during the week. You might remember him. You're sort of similar mm. vintage to me. He's mm. now 75. Mm. He's 75. Um, mm. Jerry Seinfeld is 66. Anyway, that's not what I'm here to talk to you about. Um, uh, Allison.com is yeah. one of the most impressive companies, tech companies out of Ireland in terms of the figures, in terms of the stats. I mean, I think you've got 14, 15 million, something around that registered members mm. worldwide, a couple of million mm. graduates, you know, 1500 plus um, online courses. How has the lockdown been for, for Allison.com? The lockdown has actually been very kind, the truth be told. Uh, we're one of the very fortunate companies that are, that are doing very well. Uh, uh, the time for online learning is, is really uh, burst open and, uh, and come forward. Uh, obviously, we, we're, Alison is 13 years old, mm -hmm. but uh, absolutely there's tr tremendous traffic. And uh, we signed up over 600,000 people alone in April. And, wow. Um, yeah. What are they studying? Yeah. What do they sign up for? Yeah. And um, what, are, what are they studying? Well, we have about 15 to 1,600 free courses. So, And they're getting better quality all the time as we get become more mature as a company. Uh, anything from touch typing to accountancy to ISO 9000 to project management. Uh, yeah, so it's it's across the gamut. Any, anything from, and then you, you keep going when you have 1500 courses, you have a, a lot of shipping from uh, garden design to uh, how to become a dog groomer. You know, anything that allows you to be employable and employed and improve your employed. So it's like, so we would focus as being, you know, people who are familiar with online learning. The other big players would be the, the Coursera's and the edX and perhaps mm. the Udemy's and, and things like that. But they're often focused with people that are already very well educated. Our focus is a little bit more bottom of the pyramid. I often talk about that we want to train the barman in Thailand to be the bar manager. So mm -hmm. that's in, in encouraging them to do basic uh, supervision skills in customer service, speaking English in a, in a hospitality setting, uh, basic accounting, HR. So trying to teach that. So we've always been very, very popular um, in, in blue collar situations where people uh, don't have the master's degree. But still, technology is entering into the workplace of nearly every worker around the world. Mm. So uh, how, do, how do they get used to that? And uh, so what we try to do is just enable the modern worker to upskill. And then, of course, beyond the, the basics, then they can start doing things like ISO 9000 or trying to, to look at, you know, quality management, or what are these other skills that they can get that gives them an edge in the workplace? So we don't compete with people doing degrees. It takes too long, far too expensive and all of that. But, you know, when you run out your CV and you say, oh, by the way, I just did the new course on Angular or whatever it is, and uh, you can say, well, where they'll ask where, where it was, and you could say it was on Allison, that's fine. They can test you immediately if it's on Allison. And mm. uh, so it gives, you, it gives you an edge. And in these times, uh, people realize that you really need an edge. There's, as you see, the stats in Ireland, nearly nearly half our workforce is actually uh, unemployed or on, on some type of assistance right now. Mm. So uh, how do, when you get back into the workplace, who are you and, and, and why would somebody hire you versus the next guy? So a lot of people are realizing that. And the one thing you can do with your time is that you can upskill. So, uh, yeah, so it's been, it's been really great. Um, I was on to you earlier on the week as to uh, curious as to what the the, the busiest Irish websites are, mm. but clearly Ryanair has been the, the mother of, you know, one of the top thousand busiest websites in the not, world. But they're, not uh, not for reasons Ryanair would want, but yeah, yeah. But their traffic has actually been tanking, so they're not as busy as they used to be. And the next would be Stripe with the Collison lads, and it's obviously a phenomenal business. But what's interesting is to see that traffic go down because, and you can see that's kind of a proxy for the amount of credit card transactions that are going on. You can see recession just shouting at you so actually we're number three now we just passed out the irish times so um you know so i, I think in ireland people don't realize that allison is as big as it is but yeah. ireland is such a small country it's 
yeah, it's where we live. We love it. <laughs> we love living here. Uh, and uh, but at the same time, the action is abroad. And mm. and actually, this is where Irish businesses need to be. Is is focused on abroad and to be as competitive as you can be. So yeah, ju- just on the website stats, are they Alexa dot com? Um, well, that's Alexa. Just taking Alexa. Alexa yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you trust Alexa? It's a reasonable uh, proxy. Yeah. I usually do. If 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 you if you tell me that the Irish Times is is ahead of the Irish Independent, then I go mm, maybe not. Maybe it's not uh, a trustworthy source. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, well, uh, it'll, it'll come back. Obviously, it's taken a blow with your with your paywalls, but but the paywalls will come back. Irish Times took a hit when it, when it, and, then, and and then came back. So do you know one thing about our paywall? I'll tell you this. I quite like paywalls because I think it's a pure indication of whether the market likes your product or not. We've gone from zero to 20,000 subscriptions in two and a half months. Now, I'm if you have ever heard this podcast before, I'm not one to beat the drum for, you know, uh, f- from a corporate perspective. I'm not a rah-rah kind of a guy, yeah. but um, zero, I- I'm actually surprised. Zero to 20,000 subscriptions from mm. scratch in two and a half months. Now, it is only a tenner a month, but mm. I-, I was genuinely slightly surprised, happily surprised, but surprised uh, nonetheless. But you're right, it will probably take a little bit of a hit in terms of overall traffic, but yeah. it's a trade-off. Um, yeah. Um, interesting, just before I move on, interesting on the Stripe one, because Stripe is another, it's a bit like yourselves. It's a company that uh, a lot of people have maybe heard of, but don't exactly know, have never gone in and had a good close mm. look at what they do here here in Ireland. I'm actually, yeah. it's curious to me though, that they're at number two there be, for the reason that, you know, I wouldn't have thought that they were a, well, as, as an Irish-owned website, this is what I'm saying. Like, so, so the, the top ten websites in Ireland are are all American multinationals. They're usually the usual, yeah, right. the usual. So, yeah, the usual. Uh, so what are the big Irish websites? So that, that's yeah. and, and I guess you could say it's international. And look, uh, you know, they're we- they're so far ahead of us that that's yeah. a very they're two very busy websites. And that actually solves my Irish Times Independent because, in theory, technically, we might be a Belgian-owned uh, company, a website, yes, maybe. Because we have new owners. Anyway, that's completely by the by. Um, yeah. we, you and I have talked in depth before about mm. the concept and the idea of gaining your qualifications and certificate uh, online. I've asked you before, I, I'm going to ask you again, um, you, you talked about um, people coming back to work, about extra qualifications. Is there still any remnant of a snobbery or looking down as a second class uh, qualification if you went yourself to go and get it um, uh, and yeah. you pay, paid for qualification? Okay. Well, it's very it's very hard to compare it because obviously there's a Alison is free and mm-hmm. it's purposely free. We're trying to make it accessible for people to to come on and, and learn for free. So it's very very hard to compare. But what we notice is. Like, say, the certification rate. So Alison makes money in two ways. Right? We put up advertising on the website, and it can be annoying. But that's how we make money. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we, we've actually lessened it in recent years. But the other way we make money is that we actually we charge for certificates. Now, you don't have to purchase a certificate in Alison to prove that you've done the course, because that's kind of against our social uh, values. We, we want to be able to give anything that's needed to have an Alison free to anyone, anywhere. But if it's a nice to have, like having a piece of paper, then you pay for that. Mm. So, um, well, how how else would you tell somebody or show somebody that you had done the course? If oh, you can just you, you can have a learner transcript off the website. It's downloadable for free. You can look okay. at your learner record. It'll show you everything that you've studied and what scores you've got. So mm. the only thing about the certificates that we provide is it's a little prettier, right? Mm. But just to go back to uh, like so in in recent days, like we we are graduating somewhere between eight and nine thousand people a day on our on our platform right that's so how many people are completing courses okay so uh, you know you say okay that's a huge number and it, it certainly if as, as ed- educational institutions go that's a phenomenal number altogether so how do, how do we compare it well there's two products on alice and there's a certificate which will take you somewhere between an hour and a half to two and a half hours to do and then the film will take you somewhere between nine and eleven hours and what we find is that the certification rate uh, the number of completions has been going up steadily. And also mm-hmm. the number of people that have actually been buying certificates at the end of it has been going up. For us, it's just the growing brand name. We're, we will be changing the website in the next couple of days to say that we now have 15 million learners online. We have 2.5 million graduates of our course. And of course, that, that's, that's really speeding up because mm-hmm. at, we're at a rate at the moment that's going to put us at 2 million graduates this year alone. Okay, so we're, it's, it's, it's really speeding up. So um, 
So when we, you know, when you talk about this snobbery, the fact is that the Allison certification is becoming a very, it's, it's, it's a real currency when you're, when you're interviewing with, with people. Some people say, well, what's that? I could send you loads of testimonials, by the way, of people talking this rather than me. Um, but it, when you go in, it just gives you the edge. It shows that you're a continuous learner. It shows that, you know, particularly people who are 40 or 50, it's so hard to get a job when you're 40 and 50 and 60. You know, how do you, how do you prove to an employer saying, no, I'm not done. I can still learn. And by the way, I have a, I have a huge curiosity that's continuing to go, and, I, and I'm open for new things. I can move with the, the times. But, you know, informal certifications like this uh, are, are becoming ever more important and ever more powerful in the workplace because then you, you look at the traditional system. But, you know, to, 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 to be able to come along and say, I am an engineer, it takes four years, right? But an employer doesn't care whether you're an, employee, an engineer in, in, in fundamentally. They want to know, can you do the job that I want you to do on Monday morning? Can you learn from that? We all know that we learn 95% of what we do in our job, on the job, right? And that actually college has been kind of a proxy, a way to kind of get into getting the opportunity to do the job. We all know that it's true. We all know that we all carry, we carry around, you and I, uh, you know, we carry, we went to college and we have, have a piece of paper. But are we ever called upon it, you know, to say, look, I want to check that. We don't, nobody cares anymore that, we, that you did a degree. I want to know, what do you know now? What can you do for me now? Right. Um, and that leads on to something I, I, I think is interesting to talk about. Is we have, in the world, mm. only 7% of the people in the world have ever gone to college, right? So 93% of the world have not. So you often see, like, okay, we have very strange times currently. But take, take us back a year mm. into a situation where there's employment shortages, there's skills shortages everywhere. But why wouldn't there be in the world if we're only actually employing, employing 7%? How do we give access to all of the working adults and people who could be working around the world? How do they, we give them access to the workplace that we have today? There's a number, we can't educate them traditionally. We can't put them to four years. There aren't, there aren't enough spaces do anyway. They do your PhD. It costs too much. It's too slow. There, there isn't. There's a, there's a famous cliche in Nigeria. We, we're, here, we're very large in Nigeria. We're one of the top 300 sites in Nigeria. And, uh, and there's 50, 60 million people there. There's a cliche that you know, they need 20 universities every year for 20 years mm -hmm. just to, to manage the, the demand that they have now. <laughs> right. So you're just not going anywhere, you know. Um, but what, you know, what, you what does an employer really want to know? They want to know how smart you are. Mm. So can you do the job? And they're saying, okay, it might take you a couple, a couple of days to really pick up on it. But can you, can you, you know, how, how smart are you? That's why one thing that we're moving into, and, we, uh, and we've been doing it a lot, and we're launching it this week, is psychometrics. I've always felt that, you know, how do you judge how smart someone is smart? Well, companies have been doing it for years now, doing psychometrics. There's actually, in the last couple of years, Goldman Sachs, Mark and all of these companies in America don't actually accept your formal education. Do mm. they say, "All right, come in here and we'll test you and we'll see how bright you are"? Right? Why isn't it just like learning? We turned around 13 years ago and we said, "Look, this is stupid. That uh, all the learning is is behind paywalls. It should be out there." I've tried to drive all knowledge and skills price of it to zero because it opens it up. Get a good flow of knowledge and skills going around the world. We'll have better communication. We'll have better prosperity. If, if you wanted to focus on one single thing that will change the world positively is allow education to bloom and uh, allow everyone to have access to technology skills. Do, do you think then that we're in a moment now with this pandemic and this lockdown where I mean, you say you get 600,000 new registered users in April? I've been talking yeah. to people in traditional universities here in yeah. Ireland, very senior people. And one of their biggest fears that they're loath to articulate, but it is absolutely there, is that what we're doing, what we're all doing now and working from home and having to access things online yeah. might precipitate something, uh, a very, very significant shift in how we view the position of universities. Now, there, look, it's always going to be nice to walk around a nice campus to be able to network with people and, and meet people. But do you... What, what's your take on that? Do you think we are? Do you think this is a, a, a big changing moment? Oh, I think, and it's been coming for years. I mean, if you look at the balance sheets of Irish universities, they've been investing more in accommodation and in tourism than learning in the la in recent years. Because look at all of the accommodation that they've been putting up. That's real estate. 
you know, that's accommodation business. And then it's tourism. An enormous amount of, well, a lot of the universities are inviting foreign people to come to Ireland and study in colleges. But the truth is they're coming for cultural reasons, not for learning reasons. They're coming to learn English. They're coming to experience Ireland, nice, peace, wealthy countries. It's a nice, safe place to put your kids for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the, the, I, I think the universities, ha, their business model is broken. They're charging too much for things that they shouldn't be charging to. Like, you know, I had a, I had a kid who was in college and doing an arts degree in Galway at NUIG. And he was doing eight contact hours a week. <laughs> it's just like, what's the point of turning up? You know, go yeah. off and read a whole load of books. Well, you can do that at home. <laughs> and uh, the, the thing is, you know, so charging too much for that and charging too little for some of the very, very expensive stuff that they provide, mm. like laboratory uh, uh, access. So, you know, it, it's... When is, that, when is that trigger moment going to come, though? Because if I, if, if I look at elite education, if I want to get ahead mm-hmm. and I want to... I'm looking at the elite colleges and then everything that comes down, that trickles down after that. And what is it that the elite colleges have? They have the elite professors, the elite teachers, the systems. They invest loads in, in those systems. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it trickles down from that to the mid-tier, to the entry, all of those sort of things. When will we see, um, you know, an elite quality or standard of education investment from a, you know, a, a bunch of experts in the field, professors, the absolute top of the top? I'm talking Harvard, MIT, Stanford, Oxford, Cambridge, that level. When will we see that level transfer online or, or will we? Is that going to be a slow process? Look, you know, two and two is four everywhere around the world. So whether it's a Harvard University professor that's up there telling you or somebody else who actually perhaps could be a better communicator, um, I, you know, you, you want to know the stuff. You don't, you want to, you know, so that this, in terms of but learning. But uh, there is, uh, there is a, yeah. a bit of a difference. I mean, I'm, I have no axe to burn for, uh, mm. if, to grind for, for universities, but there is a little bit more nuance than that, isn't it? I mean, if you've got a Pulitzer Prize winner or a, a Nobel Adrian, it depends laureate, how much you're paying for it. You okay. know, you know, it, it, it depends. You know, like if you're talking about thousands of dollars listening to one guy and another guy and they're saying the exact same thing, and actually one guy is less qualified, doesn't go to Harvard, is not paid half a million a year, but actually is quite entertaining. And, and, and I said a good communicator and a good teacher. Mm. I'd take him any day against the, the Harvard guy who's probably mm. there because he's protected brilliant, writes a lot of papers, which suggests that his communication skills might be as strong as another guy. So I think, you know, what we'll go down to all knowledge and skills there's a trend around the world. All knowledge and skills is trending towards zero because as soon as the knowledge and skills is out there, it's been disseminated quicker in the, tech, with the technology that we have today and with the internet quicker than ever. So the only place where real value is holding for, for and only temporary is where the, the knowledge is new and where in some way that it's slower to get out, where there's security around it or whatever. But otherwise, I think what you're seeing is a free-for-all of knowledge and skills coming on whereby you can learn anything, anywhere, anytime, in any language. And that's what we, are, we would be aiming to do because we think, you know, the ball used to say, always fight with the inevitable. I see it as just inevitable. So going back to the Irish universities, they've got to look at, you know, where do they provide real value? What is defensible over the longer period of time? And what's the stuff that they really need to go and release? You know, and that is obvious. It's the stuff that can be done very quickly online. You can you can't be charging on it. It's quicker and more efficient to study it somewhere else. So I would say the, uni- the Irish universities, focus on what you do and uh, what you do best, what you do uniquely, and where, where you provide that value, which isn't so easy uh, provided elsewhere. So but that, that brings a lot of problems because a lot of, you know, there's classic cases, a great article in the New York Times of business in America. Uh, American universities make a fifth of their revenue on business. Okay, on business courses. Why? Because the margin on it is 95%. It's so easy to get somebody to stand up and give a lecture on marketing or whatever like that. But that is the underbelly. That's the stuff that they really can't sustain longer term because it's too easy to learn off the, you know, you listen to the, oh, the entrepreneur has done X or Y. I'm saying mm. I prefer to listen to him, not the guy who kind of read the book about him, you know? Mm. So, um, so the only question is who gets paid in that model? Because the, like to listen to you talk about it now, you're, yeah. you're, you're making a lot of good points. And yet the education system that we have now at the moment, those colleges we've been talking about, yeah. their senior administrators, their senior uh, professors, yeah. teachers, they get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars. So yeah. how will they get paid anywhere like the same amount? In well, they won't. Un- okay. They won't. 
And it's, 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 it's beyond time to be paying them what they're being paid now. It's the truth. Okay. You and I are taxpayers. I'm not mm-hmm. paying them to be doing something that really doesn't have value. The fact is that these are not talentless people. You know, yeah. it's just that these people need to be redeployed and they, they need to upskill and they need to get any into industries. The university industry, as we've known it, is a de- declining industry in terms of revenue. Like it, it annoys me when they go on about, oh, we need more money. M- money is the solution. No, you don't. You go to government and you say this whole sector needs to be restructured because what you want to do for the nation in terms of skills upgrading be done in a different way. You should be giving money to different people to provide much more value. So universities, yeah, it's uncomfortable, but it's the reality. And it's not that they're going to do, you know, they're going to disappear tomorrow. There is value. They need to look inside and say, look, a lot of people have faith that there's real value here. What is it? And of course, you can identify where it is. It's not at the lower level certificate uh, diplomas. It's up where the master's, the PhD, the research. You know, that's, that's where the real value added, where the facilities, really important, facilities, equipment, ever more yeah. specialist is ever more expensive to access, charge for it. You know, people, we have the old, the, there's the old uh, dilemma in the economic sense that you wanted to charge every student in Ireland the same rate for doing different, for, the, for doing di- very different subjects. That's got to change. If you're doing medicine today and you're really, you know, you're going to have to access equipment that really costs a lot of money. It's got yeah. to be reflective. And, uh, and there has to be a way that it makes sense for, the, for a, a bright kid who wants to spend their life doing that to, to access it. The yeah, because we, we've right. always had an approach in this country where that the economics of it were, as you're saying, but the social policy end of it was that we have tried to even it out so that if you happen to do very well in your leaving cert, but you can't afford to, you know, pay 11 grand a year to study medicine or 20 grand a year to, to study yeah, medicine. Yeah, and I want to emphasize, I'm not being reckless or careless in this. Uh, universities uh, are, are very important in the social fabric of society. And uh, so it's, it's not, and absolutely online learning is not the, the, uh, the solution for all learning needs. Uh, not Galway, at all. Galway, by the way, is, is one of the, one of the, the best, from what I hear, it's one of the best social universities uh, in the country. I'm not sure if your, uh, if your son found that. Yeah. That was the probably, experience probably in your probably household. Probably too much so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, where, where do you think we're going to go to now? Because I've seen analysis sh- from lots of different experts saying that the online uh, learning space is going to grow twofold in the next four or five years, like three, 400 billion euro in university. You're clearly saying that you think that something along those lines is going to happen. Maybe that this pandemic is going to kickstart that or give it an electric shock because people are finding that they can live without uh, turning up somewhere. But do you think that in five or 10 years time that the kids in infant school now going into primary school will have a much different, uh, you know, very different opportunities. Like, will they be able to, for example, to study in foreign universities online? I I think the technology, I'd be be a little like Bill Gates in this, is, you know, uh, the the kids don't get near technology for many years. Um, There is so much development that needs to happen with kids. And it's whether it's empathy and all of these things that really technology shouldn't go anywhere near. And we need to recognize that uh, one-to-one interaction and socialization of children is far vastly more important than any facts that they learn as an, at an early age. So let me retreat from that one. Uh, I do think that when people are adults and, and, and uh, young adults, that online learning starts picking up and comes into its own in, and being unbeatable in, in learning, in, in teaching some things. So it's just you take that industry and you move that and you enhance that and you invest in it. And uh, for, for governments around the world, they need to be investing in it more because the, the impact can be got for a lot less money than they're putting into traditional institutions. But just to say that it's, it's, um, it, it only works in, in, in certain ways. But I, I forget the, part, the question you were getting into. Do you want to remind me? You've pretty much answered it. I was asking whether the primary school students of today... Mm-hmm. By the time they get to college, will be able to do a University of Chicago degree or a Duke degree or a Sorbonne degree. Well, I, I think all of those brand names are going to be passe. I, I really do. 
those brand names mean nothing at the moment. You know, even in America, you know, it's all about you know Notre Dame. It's more oh, about football they they they've it. There's a big industry, and and also there's a big snobbery thing. There's a big snobbery oh, yeah. thing among but snobbery, but yeah, but middle class parents you know about oh my son, my daughter got accepted. I think to. that's going to die a death. I really do because it costs too much money, and people don't get value from it. Any anymore when I meet somebody and they say, "Look, I, I, you know, I'm lucky enough. I'm a graduate of Harvard. <laughs> I, I know it very well." And, uh, and uh, you know, I just see, yeah. The, the one thing I would go back to Harvard for is, is is the classmates. There's no question about that. It's a phenomenal network to have worldwide. In terms of what I learned, ah, oh, no, not really. I, I you know, I, I see my own. I saw four kids, and the two two of them are in college, and I just and, and they're good learners and they're readers and they're. I just see how they manage their time and how interested they are in learning things. And they find of all of the educational and learning solutions that are available to them, college is one of the lo- lowest ones in the sense of its efficiency. You know, they will read books, they will look up the web, they will, they will just follow intensely YouTube videos of all sorts of things, Alice of the Odd Time. And, uh, you know, I just see the intensity of their, and, and, and the, the pace of their learning environment. And then I see it if it was plugged into college, it's slowing it down. You know, mm. <laughs> my daughter was That's at Trinity doing history and she was just saying, Dad, I'm, I'm reading, all, you know, I've read all the books that these guys are asking me to read. What's the point? You know, oh, by the way, I have a privilege to pay three, four thousand a year and pay 12 grand a year in rent. No, I think, I think, you know, it's not going to be you and I that will be uh, deciding this. Kids are, are making these decisions. 17, 18, 19 year olds are coming into college and saying, no. This isn't good enough. I'll watch my TED videos. I'll, I'll watch all the stuff where people are telling me interesting stuff. I'll follow my I'll follow uh, my interests, and actually, they'll end up being a lot more sharper than than people that are being through tr- these Victorian um, classes that have been set up a hundred years ago type in the structure, in a sense. Them's fighting words. Um, before I let you go, um, you. I've always struck me as a guy with a lot of ideas about a lot of things. Do you have any idea what we should be doing or how to get out of this lockdown? Should we be, with the government has set out a time frame? Is, it a, is that a good one? Should, is, is there anything we, we, else we could be doing? So uh, I, I read lots of things around, uh, from around the world. I think the, the Irish government have done quite well. Um, the, I think everyone has pulled together a phenomenal community effort. Uh, very proud of what's been going on. Um, you know, what did they do now? <laughs> Well, I want, you know, I'm not a health expert, but in terms of what's relevant to me, you know, people really need to start uh, figuring out uh, new skills. And there's a lot of jobs that just won't pick up for the next two to three years. We have hundreds of thousands of people who worked in hotels in, in, and worked in, in face-to-face. They, there's a lot of things that you can learn. There's a lot of things, in businesses that you can get into online and not to be afraid of it. It's just experiment. Start with the easy stuff. Learn how to touch type if you've never touch type. Learn online. Get your certificate. Pass the test. Do it yourself. Become a little bit more reliant on, 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 on learning new skills for yourself and open up your horizons. Don't just get stuck in it. Don't just say, oh, my job's gone. My industry's down. You know, I, I can't retrain. I don't have an option. Yes, you do. Because the people, are, people are amazing. They have an awful lot of talents that they've never discovered. So just go on a, go on a process of discovery. That's, mm-hmm. that's all I'd say. Discover just what's in you. Because there's an awful lot more in us than we ever see. Positive and inspiring words there, Mike, to finish us off. Uh, my thanks to you, to Mike Fierick, uh, founder and chief executive Anytime of uh, Allison.com. And also a, a big thank you to our new sponsor, uh, Fidelity uh, Investments, which is curring, currently hiring for its offices in Galway and in Dublin. Uh, so that's all we have time for from the Big Tech Show. From me, Adrian Weckler, the tech editor of the Irish and Sunday Independent. I'll see you right here, slightly longer here next week. Bye-bye. Times are uncertain, but your job doesn't have to be. Fidelity Investments is hiring for tech roles in Ireland. Apply now at fidelityinvestments.ie.